All right. Start working. Right. Just waiting for Dwayne to come back here. It is Tuesday night. It is, unfortunately, 8-12 this time. Uh, Matt is trying to figure two points out. And we had a little technical problem, so I do apologize to you guys. Um, uh, I need to get Dwayne in here. Where's Dwayne? Uh, nope. No. Dwayne, admit. There we go. Admit. Dwayne's in here now. Okay. Whew. Yep. There we go. And Actually. man, gotta love technology, how reliant we are on it. <laughs> you know, and something does not work, right? Uh, uh, I guess a uh, reboot. <laughs> If you are watching this on the, <laughs> on uh, YouTube, um, we had a little problem here on Twitch trying to get this out. Uh, and I do apologize to people watching on Twitch saying, hey, where's uh, where's the show at? What's going on here? Where, where are the people at? Uh, <laughs> Jeff is down in the chat. Uh, I'm also monitoring it as well. And if you haven't done so already, make sure... Everyone here has a YouTube channel. Everyone here has social media. Please go and check them out. Go check out their YouTube channels. Go check out their social media. Uh, go check out everything that they do because of a lot of great information that's on it. Uh, as well, if I can stop coughing, uh, as well as make sure you do me a favor. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click that like button. That helps out the algorithm so much. Make sure you also follow the channel and make sure you check your bell icon so we know we'll get updates and uploads. You know they're there. As well as everyone else here, make sure you go through and like their videos, subscribe, and follow them for great information and great stuff going on. And as always, you know, we do this every Tuesday night at uh, 8 o'clock. Tonight, unfortunately, a little because of technical problems, a little bit later than 8 o'clock. But we do this every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Central Time here on Twitch. And then we do it um, until about uh, 9 o'clock Central Time. So if you're out East Coast, uh, 9 o'clock your time. If you're out in the West Coast, it is at uh, 6 o'clock your time. And if you're somewhere else in the world, uh, just looking for the U.S. and Central Time, 8 o'clock, and you can figure out from there. And I just want to thank you all for tuning in, coming in, saying hi talking and asking questions. And it's always great. Uh, first thing first, I wanted to go through um, and ask this question. Uh, I, I saw earlier today, the Moose was uh, live set on YouTube and his live set, uh, he was talking about a song from Beyonce. And uh, Terry, you want to tell everyone what the song is? Okay. It's called Texas Hold'em. And it's Bob Beyonce Knowles. And it's probably her second country song. Okay. And you I know you're you like it. You're very, very interested in it. And you are uh playing that in rotation, I take it. Well, I haven't got it on the rotation yet, but it will be there. Um the big thing that I have to say is if you ain't heard it, listen to it. Because she doesn't try to change her voice. She sings like she normally does, but you could tell the Texas accent's there. So it just makes it everything perfect. Well, as a gentleman from Texas, like yourself, you probably hear that accent. You can spot it a mile away, just like I could spot a Chicago accent right a mile away. And there's certain things that uh, Tommy hears that he knows in Chicago versus other areas of the country, like front room, pop, and uh, I want a beef. So, you know, there's certain things that you say that you're from Chicago, you hear, and just like I'm sure Jeff has in North Carolina and Matt has in California and Dwayne has in Ohio, there's always those fun things. But uh, this is a song that, again, calling out, this is not something he normally does. She doesn't do country. She, you know, is, she has a lot of music. She has a lot of great songs. Uh, but this is, her, you said her second country song. What was her first country song? Uh, I think it's, it's on the Lemonade album called father's best or father knows or something like that okay so there is a, a couple country songs for her so that way you can actually have queen bee at country uh, events so i have to go start with jeff uh jeff do you know this song have you heard this song 
And if you had a country event, would you, uh, if you've heard it, would you play it? I've heard it. Um, I don't know if it would go over well for some country events. Um, true country, deep country, maybe not. Um, new country, yeah, yeah, it would it would go over. Yeah, you know, we'd go over uh, really well. But uh, yeah, it depends on the audience. Uh, I have done a couple of weddings where it probably would not go over. I actually got told not to play Beyonce. I, I tried. Actually, I was playing um, um, single ladies, and and one of the bridesmaids came up and said, "Can you please take turn that off? The bride does not want to hear that. that. That was not on her, you know, do not playlist." But that came to me, so I'm like, "Okay," right in the middle of the song, went to went to some uh, deep country. <laughs> so, um, so it depends. Depends on the crowd. As always, you, you always should know your crowd, but if it's something that you feel is the right tune for the right uh, area, um, you know, it, it's one of the things that uh, putting that in there, it's, it's something to keep on at least on your radar and know it's there. Uh, Mr. Dixon in Ohio, have you heard the song from Beyonce and would you play it at one of your events? Uh, I heard it and I'll play it once in a while. To me, this the song came off kind of manufactured you know what i'm saying because it when i heard it it only automatically thought about molly sour salaries um hold down throw down or something like that it, like some kind of background music so it's to me it came off one like the way when snoop dogg decides he want to do a, a religious record or now he wants to do a, a reggae record so the song is good I'll say that, but I wouldn't say it's like totally country. And then it just seems strange that she went country after the whole Grammy speech that Jay-Z gave about um, Taylor Swift winning all the, you know, Album of the Year awards. And then that came, the timing that seemed kind of funky. Suspicious? Yeah. Well, again, Taylor Swift is, you know, the... And that, and for less of a better term, is the main person right now who is the main draw for concerts all over uh, the world right now. And she has, she's a very, uh, you know, a very talented woman who started off in country. If you listen to her early stuff, it's very country. And then her, her she had that, cr she had kind of the crossover stuff that was more poppy country. And then now she's more pure pop. Uh, does she have some country tunes here and there, Taylor? Not like she used to have. Again, you look at her early albums; they were pretty, you know, main mainstay country, and uh, now she's much more just pop. And again, she I could see uh, you know Beyonce or any artist saying, "Hey, if it works for Taylor, you know, maybe I should try this and see if I can, you know, go at it." And I, I applaud her for doing that because it also, you know, I, I guess as an artist, it kind of shows her realm and she can stretch and do different things. She's not in one box. And that shows you how powerful of an artist she is. Uh, you know, you look at other people who can only do one thing and that's it. If you're a screamo uh, band guy from a uh, death metal band, you're not going to be going in and singing, you know, children's lullabies. Um, <laughs> it's very hard. But, you know, if you, even if you look at, like, let's say Disturbed doing uh, Sound of Silence, uh, you hear it and then he gets into, you know, a deeper tone and kind of that, you know, kind of growling a little bit for a second or two. And then he goes back. It's all lovely. It's a really good rendition of, you know, Sound of Silence, but you could tell it's still more of a metal feel to it, you know, and Beyonce, again, she's doing a little bit of country, but you can still feel that R&B feel to it. That's not a bad thing. And, you know, you cut a lot of country and blues has a very uh, similar rhythm and a lot of similar uh, songs. But also uh, the other thing with um, country, uh, R&B, you know, it's, it's next generation of, of blues. It has, they have a lot of similar feelings. So I can see her stretching herself and doing something. And, you know, getting a stiff dog, wants to do a, a whole reggae thing, you know, and wants to go down to Jamaica and live on the beach for a while and do it. Hey, God bless him. And, you know, we'll, we'll hear what his music is, see if it's good or bad or whatever. But also it matters, like Jeff said, it matters what kind of crowd you're going to have. So I'm going to go to uh, DJ APOC, uh, which he uh, he's floating around, you know, Wisconsin. He's doing high, you know, uh, kids in some of the high school kids, but also some kids in college. 
because he's a college man himself and, you know, bars and clubs. Is this something that you could throw in and rend- into the rotation of there? Or is this something you've heard or something you're just aware of now or what? Uh, I haven't heard this song before, actually. Um, but it honestly doesn't really surprise me. Like, I'm not surprised that she did something a little bit different like that because there's been a lot of new, like, hybrid country songs that I've noticed that have come out. You've even got like Morgan Wallen making songs where he's collaborating with like Lil Durk, who's like a, a heavy rapper. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really surprise me, honestly, that she's like, you know, tapping into a bit of a different genre and trying to switch things up a bit. Um, but I haven't heard the song, but based off of uh, what you guys are all saying, um, I could see it potentially being played at a bar or something like that, where people are looking for an upbeat song and something something fun to sing along to. And that's the thing is in understanding it and learning it and seeing where where it fits. Uh, Matt out in California, Beyonce that that she hangs out there enough and records stuff. Uh, but if you had a kind of a again, I know you don't get pure country weddings, but you had someone who likes the country kind of pop stuff like Morgan Wallen and some of the other um uh like you know Eric Church and stuff like that who's more of a I was I was told before a stadium country versus the more classic country. Would you uh play Beyonce's song uh there for that kind of an event or would you just uh hey sneak it in and see what happens at a uh at an event what you're doing and and clap at um sorry there's a net um I there he is um i i don't know i don't really like beyonce so i am not typically i don't ever play crazy in love single ladies i don't think i by choice ever play beyonce music um at weddings so but i like this song i mean i i don't love country but i don't hate it uh i don't like the deep country that's for sure um i like pop country and like more you know like uh Tyler Hubbard from uh, he's got one called dancing in the country. It's like a more upbeat kind of pop country. Um, But I don't know. I it's, it's a weird one. I don't, it's, it also like it, it, I could see it for cocktail hour. I could see it for cocktail hour, Um, but I don't know. It's not really a dancing track, Uh, but I more power to her. I mean, I think everyone's just as amazed that, I mean, she could pretty much do anything. Uh, I was just watching a music video of hers on vivo because that's what my TV defaults to when I quit YouTube. And she just makes it look so effortless. She was singing Love on Top and, like, not exerting herself for anything. She's just got this amazing big voice that just, to her, it's easy. I think she could just do it all. That's why she's so amazing. But, um, yeah, I mean, more power to her. I just, I don't really throw Beyonce in the rotation. There, there, there's, you know, it depends on the people. And, the, you know, like, for me, it depends on the crowd and, what people were asking for, but yeah, again, what Jeff hit nail on the head before, you know, you get to know your crowd, know what you're doing and you might add stuff in there and play stuff. It, if you have a heavy metal crowd, you're not going to be playing, you know, uh, you know, light tunes. You're going to be playing, you know, more heavy rock and stuff like that. You're going to play disturbed. You're going to play Godsmack. You're going to play stuff like that. But if you have someone who likes country, do they like nineties country? Do you like older country? You know, are we talking Merle Haggard and stuff like that? Or are we talking like fun country? You know, people out there, you know, saving a horse, ride a cowboy, you know, going into country girl, going into a few other stuff and having fun with it and having people out there dancing, having, you know, do a little hold down. Or are they pure, they want pure country songs and every song they want played is, you know, country and, you know, what level they want to go to. You know, are we talking Travis Tritt? Are we talking about Brooks and Dunn? And what were, we, what were you looking at with that? And that's, that's the thing with any genre you look at is, where you're going to go with it. If it doesn't matter if it's EDM, doesn't matter if it's country, doesn't matter if it's rock, doesn't matter if it's pop, doesn't matter if it's older, newer stuff, 80s, 90s, 70s. It's it's knowing your knowing the music and knowing the depth of it and, and doing the right job. So the next question I have for you guys, um, I can't ran into this this past weekend. Uh, I had two wedding shows this past weekend and uh, talking to brides and talking to people uh, about things and uh, i ran into a couple times uh couples asking the, the same question when i was talking to them and it wasn't you know asking for prices stuff like that. they were asking for you know not, and not the typical question like how you different from other djs but they were asking for uh basically social media where in social media what do you do how do you capture this these pictures you put you post on social media 
Uh, do you tell the couples you're doing it? Uh, when do you post stuff? Because some people are very funny about social media. So when we take pictures and stuff like that, and we take pictures of ceremony, we always post stuff either later at night or the next day, tagging the couple so the couple sees what we're posting on Instagram, on Facebook, or uh, any social media. If we do stuff on YouTube, yeah, I always, you know, and do a video uh, for a gig log, I always go through it and edit stuff, make sure there's nothing, you know, no one's, you know, caught, you know, uh, flat footed or anything that with uh, stuff. So, my question to you guys, when you guys post stuff to whatever social media platform you're posting stuff to, when you talk to the couples, do you tell them, hey, I'm going to take these pictures, I'm going to post it on social media? Do you explain to them that you need to do that so people can see so they're not bugging you to come to an event? Um, so I'm going to start with Jeff in this one. Jeff, with social media uh, and your uh, when you do events, and again, I know you do some school events, you do some uh, – events with uh, kids and stuff like that. Uh, usually most people don't post stuff for that, but when you're posting, you do post stuff either on social media. Uh, what do you usually tell people that may ask? Yeah, I mean, usually I'll tell them, you know, I will post a photo or sometimes it's just my gear, you know, uh, you know, some whatever I'm doing for that, uh, for that gig. Um, but I think it's, it's pretty rare that they don't want to be, you know, some like on some social media, um, uh, I have not run run across, you know, a couple where they've had a problem because everybody that's at a wedding is taking pictures with their phone. They're uploading photos to, you know, Instagram, you know, Facebook, whatever. So it's kind of it's kind of the norm now. Um, so I don't think you actually have to get permission. I think it's more of like if you don't want your your images out there for whatever reason, um, you know, then you need to say something because it's going to, by default, there's going to be any event. It's going to, you know, it's going to make uh, some social media. So uh, schools are a little different. You know, uh, I usually don't post uh, any recognizable photos of, of children and, uh, you know, that, and it's up to the schools if they have a policy. Most uh, don't have a specific policy, but uh, I have run across one or two that do. And, and uh, you know, I just don't post a gig log from those. And, you know, one of the things, uh, there's another nuance. I ran into um, a guy who owns a band, uh, one of the bigger, bigger band companies here in Chicagoland. And he's done some celebrity weddings. And one of the things, uh, one of the weddings he did uh, was uh, uh, Donnie Wahlberg and uh, Jenny McCarthy's wedding. And uh, that was a few years ago. Um, but he's done other celebrity weddings since then. And uh, they'll have you take your phone and they'll have, they'll grab your phone, you put it in a box and they secure your phone throughout the night. So you can't take any pictures and post anything on social media because they don't want that stuff on social media. Uh, now, regular couples usually don't do that stuff. Usually regular couples are like, you know, I, and we tell them we're up front when we, we talk to them, say, hey, we're going to take pictures, anything we post, we're going to tag you guys. We need your social media. You know, we need to know your, your uh, who you are on Instagram and Facebook and whatever because uh, we want to tag you and make sure you get these pictures. And whatever you're doing, you hashtag or whatever, you want to make sure you're, you're following that. And that's that's the other part, too, is the hashtags are always great to do, too. Uh, but when you do stuff for um, any event for a customer, uh, do you share the photos with them? Do you tag them? To me? Yeah, Jeff. Um, yeah, it depends. It, uh, if it's um, like the, the past couple of weddings that I have done, I did not get their personal, you know, had their, their personal names, like uh, what social media. So I could not tag them. Uh, I did post pictures. And I said, you know, hey, congratulations to first name and first name, but I didn't actually tag them. So, um, you know, I, again, I let their friends do that, you know, their family. And, uh, you know, if they're going to post something, let them do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, I, I usually don't make it a, a point to, you know, tag someone that uh, that I'm doing a, a wedding for or any event. Okay. Now, uh, Dwayne, what about you for social media? Do you tell couples or you tell customers that you're going to take some pictures for, you know, for the gram or for uh, the tubes and do you, do you tag them? Do you, uh, 
do you say, Hey, I'm going to tag you in these and do you get their, uh, social media handles and, uh, make sure that, uh, they know exactly what pictures you took or video. Um, no, but I was going through my contract. Cause I remember I took my contract and based it on the guy that was kind of like mentoring me. And I have at the end of my contract that says me sci-fi entertainment reserves the right to take pictures and or videos of the event to use on our social media sites. So I have that that, but I do, if I do something lately, I've been doing, uh, taking whatever videos or pictures I took and put it in my um, MacBook iMovie where you can do like um, like trailers. So I create a quick trailer and send them like a thank you. And then I'll like say, here's a, um, a little video from your wedding um, reception. So they get a chance to see that. But as far as doing the um, tagging and the social media, I haven't got that far. Okay. I just, I guess I, my mind is on everything. I saw, I don't think about that. Now, a lot of times I have a lot of videos that I don't even get a chance to really use because it's like I videotape all this stuff, but then having the time to sit there and go through each thing, you know, the whole, um, the whole clips is time consuming. So I really don't even have time to do it when I do. Okay. So, you know, it, that that's the, uh, that's one of the things that, you know, getting everyone here has YouTube channels. We want to put content out for YouTube, but also, you know, having that content. And I don't know about you guys, but I put the content on YouTube for customers to see so that we're not bugging me to come to a, a wedding and say, hey, I want to see what you do at a wedding. Well, here's video of this wedding. This is what I did. And even tonight well, before uh, coming on here, uh, we had a uh, Zoom conference with a couple who uh, who hired us and I'm showing them pictures and video and actually – uh, I, one of the videos is from a wedding he went to for a cousin that we know um, back in 2015. I had go on YouTube, which I put a video up on YouTube about it and uh, showed a video from YouTube from 2015. And it, it's it's one of the things like, yeah, you, you, we didn't see him. Uh, but the thing is that he was like, you know, I, I was there. I, rem I remember being there and having fun there. So that's the important part. But it's just one of the things that, uh, you know, getting that content is always important. And, you know, just making sure that, again, I just feel tagging them so they know exactly what's out there is always great to do. Uh, I'm going to go over here to Tommy. Tommy, uh, I know you post a lot of stuff on the gram. You post a lot of stuff on a lot of, uh, you know, channels. Um, I'm sure you're on TikTok. I'm sure you're on all the Snapchat and all the fun stuff, you know, being a... Uh, a college dude. Uh, but when you do that stuff right there and you post those pictures of people, you know, at, at a uh, event you're doing and you're rocking out the White Sox shirt, uh, do you, uh, do you um, basically tell the venue you're going to, you're going to post some video or when you do an event, do you tell the one that you're going to post pictures of their event and do you tag them or do you tag the, the bar that you're, you're at? Uh, if I'm doing like a private event, I, if I'm taking any pictures of the crowds, like if it's a wedding or something, I usually don't try to do any close-ups of people. I, I try to make it more like either uh, like my setup, like Jeff said, or uh, maybe like a big group photo of everybody out on the floor. Um, if it's like a bar or something, I like to I like to do the same thing where you get the whole the whole view, but I'll usually tag the bar, the uh, promoter, the venue at that uh, place. Um, trying to think any other scenarios where I like will do media when I did the homecoming or the uh, school dance a few weeks ago. Um, same thing there. I told my filmer, like no close up shots of people. Let's just keep it a very broad overview of the uh, dance floor. Um, so yeah, I usually try to just make it a more uh, uh, what's the word? Like I'm not trying to put individual people in those videos, more so like show the whole thing and uh, like some of the best clips from uh, like that night. So, well, the highlight reel, yeah, that's, that's what we all try to do. Have that good, beautiful highlight reel to to show potential clients and kind of showcase what we could do. So I'm gonna go out to uh, down to Texas to the Moose, who uh, I mean, if you haven't done so already, check out his shorts. He always has these things with uh, a moose walking through something, doing something crazy. And he's always saying, damn, that moose is loose. 
uh, for his tagline for his uh, his DJ business, and it's uh, I, I get bang out. I, I laugh, I chuckle, and I get the humor behind it. it, it it's a cool little marketing ploy, and especially someone who does stuff like that. Uh, do you tag people? Do you talk to people? Do you tell people, hey, I'm gathering pictures or video for uh, the gig logs you do? Okay, so. I usually send them a, con a wedding contract, and at the end of the wedding contract is a disclaimer. And when I send the party pack, I have a disclaimer on the end saying that I'm going to post, I'm going to take pictures, and I'm going to uh, do everything on uh, on YouTube or my website. And what I do is I send them a link after the video is up. And if they want, I also send them the card in the mail. So I usually send them a card. I make the, the whole uncut wedding in the card, and then then I send it. But what I try not to do, especially when it comes to when I do kids' parties or I do schools. Um, now, field day is another animal. I uh, When field day comes in, the kids... Uh, some of the girls come out with bathing suits on and everything else. Like I do uh, pool, pool parties, I won't show like the kids at all, really. I, I do a stand out real quick of the, of the thing and show everybody, but I really don't like focus on on because um, I want that want somebody to uh, focus on my kid, not to say that you know what I mean. So it, it's something that I do, and when I'm at weddings. I post it, I put it in the back, and I get a whole view of everybody. And then that's how I do it. But YouTube is pretty cool because if you take your clip, I think it's about five seconds long. You can put five second long clips into your music and you won't flag you. It's kind of crazy, but it sounds, <laughs> and it is. But that's what oh, I yeah. Do. Oh, I, I know exactly because I, I try to ride that. Uh try to ride that so that way I can get the music in there but not get the uh the hit on the uh algorithm yeah, yeah, the yeah music yeah. yeah the saying that oh well we're not gonna you can't be monetizing this of course I'm not monetized but when I be monetized in the future I'd like to at least get, get my one I get hit <laughs> I get hit once a week with it and I'm like dude so I usually pull the video off and have to put the video back on and people are like where'd the video go and I'm like it's my fault. <laughs> you, you gotta love you gotta love uh some of the h hurdles we had to jump through as yeah. uh people on YouTube and on Twitch and so forth. See the nice thing with Twitch for like I DJ here on Twitch uh and do music sets. Uh the nice thing about that is that you don't have to worry about being flagged as long as you don't save it onto Twitch. So wow. there, there's there's tons of DJs on Twitch right now playing. And again, I I'm up here, I play too. But the thing is that um it's one of the things that as long as you don't record it onto your channel, you won't get a strike. You do it live and that's it. You're done. You're yeah. okay. And then that's the uh, mixed cloud. You can get away with it because it's a radio station. Mixed cloud. Yeah. Mixed it. cloud as well. They, they, you can get away with it there too. For now, who knows in the future what happens, yeah, you know, it, it's, we have, we have avenues right now open and in the future who, who knows, you know, it's yeah. very frustrating, but it, it, you know, especially, you know, you get, you pay for music you get licensed for music and you want to make sure everything is above board, but it's like, ah, come on, man. I, I want, I'm going to show my wares. Speaking of showing their wares, what man in California shows his wares the most, that is DJ Salsas. Uh, when you do stuff, and again, I know you do a lot, tons of gig logs um, and showcasing things. Do you tell your clients that you're going to do a gig log and you post, when you post stuff on, you know, on the gram on so forth, so on your social media, uh, do you tag the the couple or tag the company or tag the uh, owner of the bar or whatever that you're doing stuff with so they see what you're doing and they can kind of like, hey, okay, maybe use it for their uh, social media? Uh, I do. Um, it depends. So in our contract, there's something that states, you know, any footage may be used for promotional purposes. So that covers all, all of our bases. Uh, I, as a rule of thumb, don't really record like private corporate events um, as much uh, unless they're like cool with it. Cause again, you know, 
bunch of employees getting drunk for a company, I don't think is the best look if somebody sees it. So, um, HR nightmare. When, I mean, pretty much as, as the guest walks into a wedding, they know their picture is going to be taken. They know their video is going to be taken. So like, I've never gotten any flack from any of it. Um, I don't tell them I do YouTube. I don't really advertise YouTube on my Instagram or anywhere. Um, I keep YouTube and Instagram totally separate uh, just because, uh, you know, I, I just do. But um, I always, I mean, you see my stories. I always tag uh, the couple. It's What's nice about it is if you film a bunch of content, you get some good clips, and then you tag them, they're going to see that the next day and be like, oh, my God, thank you so much. It was such a great party, blah, blah, blah. And that's your perfect opportunity to ask for a review. Right then and there. Oh, yeah, great. They're looking through the content. Boom, it's fresh in your mind. Here's a review link whenever you get a minute. And uh, that's usually how I work. And then for me, like they'll say, oh, my God, can you send me this? Can you send me this? And I just like hop on um, CapCut, throw all the clips together and drop it through WeTransfer, which is like Dropbox, but 10 times better. And uh, send them a WeTransfer link and they have all the clips in 4K that I took from the night. There you go. So some of them do. Um find me through YouTube and want like a gig log. So I'll make it, um, whether or not I make one, that's really just kind of, I'm feeling like doing it or not. Um, and it's always the ones that I decide not to do a gig log that are the most lit parties. I don't know why it just seems to happen that way. So, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a lot though, to like record vertically horizontal. Like the last gig log I did, I had my Insta 360, uh, my 360 camera. I had, the Pocket 3, which was a gimbal um, with the microphone. And then I had my two iPhones, one recording recording horizontally and one vertically. And uh, that's a lot for one person to manage four different devices to record stuff on. So I don't know. I, I Depends if, how much I'm getting paid that night, whether or not I'm feeling like going all out. Like I have one this weekend and uh, it's going to be like a full EDM rave style. Like they love trance and tech house and dubstep and hard style and it'll be fun but like the venue is tiny where the dance floor is and i'm right there on it so it's perfect for like the 360 camera because i could just pop that right there get myself get them 360 what's nice is it records horizontally and vertically so it would be wonderful if they made one with a way better sensor that works great in low light because that thing even the one inch the rs looks like crap in low light um so in time that'll be the solution i just I tell people all the time, you need to come up with a camera that can record both horizontally and vertically and not just crop it because I had videographers that send me promo reels and you can just tell it's a massive shot that they've cropped and recentered, which still looks great, but not all of us have a $10,000 camera that we're filming on that we can do that with. So that's, uh, yeah, wow, I just went on a tangent. But yes, I social media is important and uh, a lot of clients love it. They love seeing you there, especially businesses like, it's easy. Like, oh, you tag the business. They know who you were. They know, oh, this guy had beautiful white speakers. We'll keep his card on file. There you go. So I take it you're going to play a lot of Skrillex, right? No. Skrillex no. is old. Nobody plays Skrillex anymore. Really? Uh, uh, I mean, there. so dubstep is a wide genre because there's stuff like excision. And to me, excision is not really... It's dubstep, but it's more like earlier dubstep of like a lot of wobbles and some like really raunchy headbanging type stuff. But it's not the kind of headbanging dubstep I like because um, there I have a playlist in my library that's all headbangers, which is like you're on the rails, just like wop wop wop. It's like it follows a certain time code, and what Excision does is a little odd. So they like Excision, they like Alinium, they like Zed's Dead, they like. Uh, seven lions so it's uh, not the dubstep i would play but i'll still uh i'll add some of my own in there but the stuff that's weird is trance nobody trance music you need to be like on some on some stuff to enjoy it because it's very it's very boring <laughs> and it's long cascades because you're tra a trance I, I like cascade uh, stuff yeah but he's at least got a little house into it like trance trance like above and beyond is just like it, there's a drop, but it takes three minutes to get to the drop, and you're just kind of like ah da 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 da, and you just so we'll see how it well, goes. Yeah, you're, they, they take down long ride, and the songs are like twelve minutes long, which yeah, I, so I have no problem. You know, I remember from a Cascade there. Yeah, I cool. love the long version of it. it's like six and a half minutes long. It's like I, I, I can sit back and relax. There's a video on YouTube uh, that's they're driving in the snow and it's this long drive for the whole entire. So I don't know who did that, but. It's like it's just like a perfect video for that song. If I if I could have that video 
in my selection, that'd be the one I would use because it's just a perfect one. But, you know, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I, I know you just said what uh, all the cameras you use. Uh, Dwayne, what cameras do you use for when you do uh, video and uh, for photo? I used to use my iPhone, uh, like multiple iPhones, but I got an Insta360, and I like that one because it can get everything, me, um, the crowd, and then I also can look down and see my hands so I catch everything when it works because it overheats a lot. Yeah, you need to – it depends what – so I, I keep it on the regular video mode and still film either – I think I drop it to – Whatever 60 frames a second is. I don't film in the 5.7, I don't think. Um, but I might. But I, I've never had mine overheat. It does get very warm. Um, the key is, what's weird about it is if you have it, it's not meant to record like a DJ set. It's meant for like quick action clips. So when you're recording for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it like splits the clips up, but it starts to get like really hot and then the battery will die. So I always have it like connected the whole time and just straight record as long as I can and it seems to work fine for me, um, but uh, I have like a special table mount that I use. That's like uh, you have the other thing that's tricky about those cameras. You have to make sure at the bottom of it where it mounts is like a thin mount, because if you have just like screwing it onto a standard uh, quarter inch or whatever it is that they use for photography, it'll show all of the base when you pan down. So you have to like have something that's as thin as the pole that you're mounting it with. So I use this thing, this little thing. OK, yeah, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. So kind of, kind of, uh, I guess, I guess, uh, Insta needs to come out with a, uh, basically a better heat sink or a liquid cooled system that, uh, dissipates heat better to do stuff for longer periods of time. Uh, it's I know uh, talking to some uh, professional photographers, um, Canon had a problem with their first generation, the mirrorless, uh, cameras that they were overheating. The, uh, the sensor was overheating on them. Um, and I know they fixed that fairly quickly, but maybe I don't know if they have a new uh, 360 come out that may be better for the uh, heat problem. Now, I'm going to talk to a gentleman who he deals with uh, video a lot, who uh, his regular uh, full-time job, he deals in the uh, television realm. When you do uh, video um, professionally on your other realm on those cameras, I know they have the big, huge, expensive cameras, you know, for uh, um, for television but do you do some of the same stuff you do in that for when you video yourself with your phone or whatever you're videoing with? Do you use some of the same techniques? Yeah. For my gig logs, um, I use only GoPros. Uh, I've got a three, I've got an eight and 11 and a 12. I'm sorry. Um, eight, 10 and 11. I do not have the 12 yet. By the way, Matt, uh, if you want something, a, uh, the new 12s, um, GoPros, will shoot in a, uh, I think it's an eight by seven mode, which you can then use it for either vertical or or a horizontal. So that's that's a, an option. Um, been, but I mean, it, it requires an editing to choose one yeah. or the other, so. I've been looking at that or the um, Insta360 Ace that they just came out with, because that shoots up to 8K, uh, native 8K. And when it's shooting in 8K at 60, then you can like fully zoom and not lose quality. Yeah. Uh, or at least crop it. I don't know. I've then that one has like a bunch of AI stuff built in. So I'm I'm looking at those, but again, I don't it's I always have my phone on me so it's easy to record, but like having to charge all these things and pack them all and like it's just Yeah. Well, a great photographer once told me the best camera is the one you have with you. So yep. that, that's a rule I live by, but I use uh GoPros. Uh this one is an 11 with the uh, media mod on it which has a a, a different microphone and okay. uh that you know in a loud environment of a gig uh you really have to have that. Just the the little microphone that's built into, you know, the camera there's two it's stereo, there's one on the front, one on the back. I mean they'll sound like crap after, you know, you start jamming. Um mm. but the media mod really helps. Uh, I shoot everything in 1080. Uh, I don't do any zooming. I set it up on a, um, a light pole that's about six, eight feet in the, on, in the air, set it up behind me. And that's what I get my shots with. And, and I have a remote that basically uh, lives right on my controller and I just hit uh, power on, you know, record, record, stop, record, start, whatever. Uh, that I don't have to worry about, you know, having to reach around and control it. Uh, sometimes I'll just roll it and let it go for like 30 minutes, which is the max clip you can get on one. Uh, I have, um, 
this one is the 10 and I set it up just to get my time lapses. And that one I usually shoot in 4K because I like to do a little zoom in to, you know, to the gear as I'm setting it up. Um, but one thing that I've, I've been doing lately, I bought this battery pack um, and I run a, basically I hang this right behind the GoPro and run a cord to it and never have to change the battery. So, which is great. And the, the, the trick I've learned is you take the battery out of this and just run this, the, the big battery, and it will never overheat. So that's a cool trick. So a question on the professional stuff, the stuff that you deal with your regular job, uh, they, is, it, is it still Panasonic to King or to Sony or is it Canon? Everything's Sony. Yeah, everything's Sony. Now, a lot of people are using like, um, you know, mirrorless or DSLR. I mean, everything's moving to mirrorless uh, as far as the, um, you know, the, the I want to say the prosumer grade uh, cameras. Um so those are either Nikon, Sony, or or uh, Canon, uh, but for the big cameras that we have, they're strictly Sony, I and mean, they're not the little you know uh, mirrorless or D DSLR. No, they're they're they're, huge. they're the bigger bigger cameras, and uh, some are smaller now. They're you know squares like this big, uh, you know, and but but you got to mount lenses on them. But you know they're um, you know they they are they're going to have a much better range than you know a little gopro like this but they're also you know they're 10 grand and and um you know they're bulky and cumbersome and you know you don't want to drop one <laughs> so no i i've seen i've seen um professionals uh for news agencies and those cameras they look heavy um and you know do they still use the betamax to record them in or did they, they're on digital sd cards no, everything's on cards. Um, yeah, when I first got into the business, it was, uh, you know, we had everything was videotaped and, and then you had to take the tape out and you put it in two machines and you record from one tape to another tape. And, you know, it was pretty rudimentary and archaic when you look back now. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's where I, I, I cut my teeth on. I was watching last night. I, I, I'll leave on this one for talking about uh, the tapes. I was watching uh, Speed last night. It was on um, Encore uh, Action. And the part where they have the uh, the bus at the airport and they go to the news van and the news van, you know, tunes into the uh, the, uh, the bad guy's uh, television frequency and the guy records a minute and loops the, the video. I'm like, you know, modern technology, I'm, again, I'm sure, especially news vans, um, I don't know if they could have back then or now, uh, you know, do a scan for frequencies like that. But recording, I'm sure it's much easier now to do one of the vans than versus back. I think it was 90, 94, 95 when that movie came out. So, yeah. yeah now, you know, we're getting away from vans altogether. And now the news, the news guys, um, you know, basically they're using their phones or a small pack, which has basically four cell phones in it. And everything is going up you know, through, uh, through the phone lines, you know, every live shot now is doing that. But let me, yeah. let me say this. One thing that really chaps our butts is in the, in the business is watching a movie. Um, and the guy, it's like uh, holding, uh, a, a camera, holding it completely wrong. You know, it's just only, we would notice that, you know, he's, he's gripping it. Like he's got it on his shoulder and he's gripping it like the handle on top. And that's how you carry it. When you're carrying it down by your knee, that's, that's what you use. And you're gripping it like that. And uh, no, it, there's a handle on the lens for that. You know, it's like, and uh, it's always just, you know, painful to watch. I, I think most of the, uh, most of the photographers I've seen for like new with news and TV and stuff like that, Usually they're, they're relying on a tripod unless they have to do it on their shoulder, but mostly they want that steady shot. <clears throat> so there's no you know movement or anything like that. So they always put on a tripod. And you know, it, it's every uh camera guy I ran into that's professional like yourself who deals with television, always, always very nice person. And uh I always treat them with respect and try to stay out of their way. Uh, you know, especially when they're doing stuff like a, a wedding show. Um you know, hey, you want to put your coat here? You need power? You anything? Oh no, I'm good. You need some water? Oh great. You know, uh, let me let me stay out of your way. You know, I want to make sure anything in your way. Let me get out. Because again, they're there to do a job, and just like a videographer or a photographer, I don't want to get in their job. I don't want to get in the middle of their stuff. I want to you know help them out. So the moose, 
I got to ask you, what do you use to record your videos with um, and stuff? He screen captures uh, Zoom. <laughs> I use this Galaxy S10. And I use a Canon. I think it's a E something. I forgot what it was, but I got a, a big Canon that I use to take the pictures. But I use the video. I use the the Galaxy S10. Or I use my Galaxy S20. Which I, want. I try not to use this phone because it's usually got the hard drive. I use my I mean, Galaxy uh, S20 for the most part. And I, um, I'm i going to be upgrading soon to the, the 24 um, because yeah, my battery in this is not holding it well. Hopefully, I've got a nuts nuts camera the the 24 ultra get the ultra if you're gonna upgrade get that's the ultra. what i'm gonna probably go to because it has the most lenses and it's like this this it's has impressive. uh this has five lenses including telephotic um again this is not the same quality with a gopro and it's not the same quality as like jeff gets to play with it, his regular job and it's not like a 360 cam like you guys have i'm not the cool kid i guess <laughs> but you know for what i capture and i do use and I have actually had a unboxing. I have it on my channel. Uh, the Sennheiser microphone. It's a uh, shotgun mic that uh, with a uh, gimbal that it actually stands and actually has a little feet, so I can put it on my table and record stuff. And I've done that a couple of times. A couple of videos. I have a really long uh, gig log on YouTube with me mixing and stuff like that. Uh, that right there was done on my phone. Not usually recording 4K, but I upload everything in 1080. Uh, and, and, you know, it just takes a lot of space, 4K. And I know, again, I did a wedding uh, a while back for a guy who's an electrician on uh, Chicago PD. And this is going back, I want to say, in 2019. They at Then they were recording in 8K. And he said when the next camera comes out, they'll go up to the next one because they're trying future-proof. So down the road when TVs are 10K TVs or 12K TVs, they kind of have a future proof for that for TV shows. Um, so it's it's interesting when you hear people you talk about that kind of stuff. So APOC, brother, got to mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what do you use to uh, record yourself uh, there, Tommy? Uh, usually I'll use just my phone camera or uh, I've got one of the Insta360 cameras as well. And um, so, yeah, those ones are good. I can edit basically uh, in all directions. So if I want to get a clip of the crowd in front of me or if I want to get a clip of myself mixing something, uh, I'm able to do that all. And then uh, if I have a filmer come in, then he uses like a, you know, digital camera. So or not digital, but, you know, a professional one. So. And that, that's the that's the thing, I guess uh, you got three guys here with Instas and one guy with GoPros. And uh, I guess, uh, Terry, you and I got to step our game up, man. We gotta get we gotta get professional like these guys are. <laughs> well, I got a Canon camera that does film and all that, but I just don't have the time to sit there and pull with it. So I gotta get an iPhone is what you need first. No, no iPhone. Oh no 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 no! I I don't do iPhones though. Yep, yeah, neither do I. I, I, nope, I love my I. kids have all that good stuff. The I, least, I'm, the most successful. I, the most I'm sorry, successful I'm a, business I'm people have iPhones. Only I only, know. I. <laughs> The I tell people all the time, like I don't really work with clients who don't have iPhones. It's so hard. Oh, uh, here he goes. Wait, wait, hold on. Um, Let me get the soapbox out. He doesn't. Like I had it. one today. I had one today. <laughs> I was trying to send him pricing. I'm like, oh, so sorry. I can't send you pricing while I'm on the consult call because you don't have an iPhone. So I had to send it to his wife instead. Oh, see, At least yeah, get like, a Google. Um, like the Pixel, the Pixel you can send attachments to from an iPhone, but Android phone, Samsung, no, not at all. They don't, they don't communicate do well. There's other they ways you can send it through email. I'm on the phone with them. I'd rather them have it right there in front of them. You, you, could, you, could, open, you could be on the phone, open an email up real quick, send it, boom. Too much work. Uh, <laughs> all right. <You> can, <laughs> there is with no that price. Said, this is a technical right. difficulty we had a little bit today. And again, if you're here watching, I do apologize. And uh, Fred, the uh, godson uh, DJ, uh, he didn't know any of those uh, artists. I guess we're talking about EDM and trance artists. Uh, you know, that's one of the things that uh, you may pick up here and there. You know, a little bit of music knowledge. Uh, we do talk Follow about my that channel. Stuff. I have new stuff every week. Yeah. Every and... Friday. Tune in Spotify on Instagram. I, I link every Friday. I do Solstice <laughs> Select. 
five to ten of the best tracks of the week, all brand new releases. They're usually EDM, sometimes hip hop. Shameless plug. I I, I still say Skrillex should be part of that because Skrillex is a founding member of of dubstep, and you can't go wrong That's with some Skrillex because he's got some crazy stuff out there. And you mm-hmm. know, I I know his his he's changed his image. Before he looked like uh, uh, he, he, the thick glasses of that. He looked like someone totally differently, like Corey Feldman with long hair. I've heard people say yeah. that, you know, I heard, I heard, I heard uh, you know, it's not like the, uh, I, I've heard a couple of things, you know, you see a couple of things to talk about, him, but uh, I'm mm-hmm. glad that he's uh, changed his look a little bit because now he looks a little more normal, but yeah, you, again, there's a lot of great DJs out there and, you find DJs that you like with music and stuff like that, you know, make sure you support them, make sure you follow them, make sure you, uh, uh, download their latest stuff, you know, Tiesto. And of course, uh, uh, you have, Oh God, you have so many marshmallow. You have so many of these DJs out there that, uh, produce some good stuff. So make sure you listen to what they, what they produce and, um, you know, always, uh, expand your mind. Just like, you know, Terry said before with Beyonce's song and then, uh, Matt over here with, uh, some dubstep and, uh, some trance and uh you know cascade again cascade's my man for trance i just, i just love that stuff you know it's like i listen to it all day long but uh besides that again i want to thank you guys all for watching us if you if you joined late i do apologize for the late start uh you could blame uh blame blame the internet blame blame microsoft blame whatever blame your android phone uh, no, I don't blame the, the phone. Has nothing to do with it. The phone is totally innocent. The phone has nothing to do with it. Uh, no. Maybe because there's Apple here. That's why it's your Apple phone blocked everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with that said, I'm going to go to you, Matt. You want to take us out, please? Um, what do we say? You know, <laughs> thanks for tuning into the DJ Roundtable. Peace. There we go, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> Have a good week. See you guys later. <laughs>